you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote-unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game. So just tell your friends, magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads, welcome. Welcome one and all. I thank you so much for joining me today on this magical day always a magical day. Remember, we get to create the magic in our lives. We get to see the magic in our lives. We get to view it from whatever perspective we decide to view it. That's the beauty of this magical creation is we get the choice. We get to decide how we want to perceive, how we want to see things once we're aware, of course. And today, I thought I would get into some of the lessons that we're learning here today, or some of the reasons or things behind how we choose these lessons, and just so we can all get an understanding of really how this whole play here, how this whole game works, because it is a play, it is a game. We don't like to hear that sometimes, but that's exactly what it is. We each have our own play. We're playing a certain character, and there's other characters that come into our play, and we play a character in other people's plays. And we're all here helping each other learn and grow. And these lessons are numerous. And until we learn them, we're going to continue to experience the same things over and over and over again. And this reminds me, before I go any further, speaking of things that we continue to experience over and over again because we need to let go often, we need to forgive. This workshop that my colleagues and I are doing, Tracy Mahan and Monica Dunn, We're doing this coming Saturday, September 9th, on how to forgive, let go, and move into a new chapter. So if this sounds like something that would be beneficial to you, check the link in the comments below. So today, I thought I would get into some of the Law of One material. I know I talk about the Law of One frequently, and it's not very often that I actually read the material. I think I've maybe done it once or twice. Today, I'm going to get into some of the actual material. And it was interesting because I thought about this today and I sometimes when I think about doing this, I think, "Mm, should I or should I just talk about something else? And I walked upstairs today after having this thought and my partner was on a call with Jim McCarty, who is actually one of the three people who was responsible for channeling this material. And I thought, well, if that's not enough sign for me, then I don't know what is. So here we are today reading some of the Law of One material. And I happened to pick book two, and I happened to open up to the session, which is dated March 1st, 1981. Oh, and it happens to be session number 33. A incredible number to me, which means balance, divine harmony, creating this balance within ourselves of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So session 33 took place March 1st, 1981. And I'm not going to get into the whole chapter itself. I'm just going to kind of bounce around because that's what I like to do. Bounce around like a little tigger. 
<laughs> if you knew me, you would know how true that is. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start here with this question. I was wondering if there is a programming of experiences that causes an individual to get certain catalysts in his daily life. For instance, as we go through our daily life, there are many things which we can experience. We can look at these experiences as occurring by pure chance or by a conscious design of our own, of our own such as making appointments or going places. I was wondering if there was behind the scenes, as you might call it, programming of catalyst to create the necessary experiences for more rapid growth in the case of some entities. Does this happen? Ra. The incarnated entity, which has become conscious of the incarnative process and thus programs its own experience, may choose the amount of catalyst or, to phrase this differently, the number of lessons which it will undertake to experience and to learn from in one incarnation. This does not mean that all is predestined, but rather that there are invisible guidelines shaping events which will function according to this programming. Thus, if one opportunity is missed, another will appear until the student of life experience, of life experience grasps that a lesson is being offered and undertakes to learn it. So let's break that down a little bit. And what they're saying there is that not everything is completely predestined. We have a basic blueprint, a basic theme, a lesson, a, a vibration, things that we want to experience, things that we want to learn. And within that huge scope of that vibration, of that lesson, we get to have different experiences. And so we get to broadly pick in terms of that vibration, of that experience, of that lesson. But as we're here in this life, we do get to create what it is that we're experiencing. We get to choose. We get to decide. Am I going to learn this lesson? Am I going to understand? Am I going to have an awareness? Am I going to have a different perspective on this experience? All the different times I've had this experience, have I had a different perspective? How many times are we asking us that question? Do I remain in the same perspective each and every time I have an experience like this one? Or have I learned and have I changed my perspective? Because most of us who are continuing to experience the same lesson over and over again, it's because the lesson is not fully learned. And this is something that can be frustrating along this path, I know, because it seems as though we do learn lessons. Or we learn the outer shell of the lesson. And we might learn the two outer shells of the lesson. But there are deeper and deeper layers of this lesson. And so they will come back in our life if it is not completely learned. All of the layers of the lesson. And this is programmed because we're here to grow. We're here to spiritually grow and we want to do just that. And so we do program this blueprint for ourselves. And that's as far as it goes. It's an invisible guideline. We get to co-create co create our entire experience. And when I say co-create, it's because we do live in a world that's filled with others, other selves that are just other bits of us. And so that's how we're co-creating. Let's move on to the next question. Then these lessons would be reprogrammed, you might say, as the life experience continues. Let's say that an entity develops the bias that he actually didn't choose to develop prior to incarnation. Is it then possible to program experiences so that he will have an opportunity to alleviate this bias through balancing? Is this correct? I am Ra. This is precisely correct. Okay, thank you. From this, I would extrapolate to the conjecture that the orientation in mind of the entity is the only thing that is of any consequence at all. The physical catalyst that he experiences, regardless of what is happening about him, will be a function strictly of the orientation in mind. I will use as an example, example deleted, this being a statement of the orientation of mind governing the catalyst. Is this correct? I am Ra. We prefer not to use any well-known examples, sayings, or adages in our communications to you due to the tremendous amount of distortion which any well-known saying has undergone. Therefore, we may answer the first part of your query asking that you delete the example. It is completely true to the best of our knowledge that the orientation or polarization of the mind-body-spirit complex is the cause of the perceptions generated by each entity. Thus, a scene may be observed in your grocery store. The entity ahead of self may be without sufficient funds. One entity may then take this opportunity to steal. Another 
may take this opportunity to feel itself a failure. Another may unconcernedly remove the least necessary items, pay for what it can, and go about its business. The one behind the self observing may feel compassion, may feel, may feel an insult because of standing next to a poverty-stricken person, may feel generosity, may feel indifference. So you can see from what Ra is saying there that there are many different ways to perceive any given situation. And we get to decide what that perception is. We get to decide if we feel compassion or empathy or if we feel hatred or disgust or nothing at all. And once we're aware of paying attention to all of these different perceptions, all of these different energies running through us, then that gives us the opportunity to then balance these emotions, these energies, and these vibrations. Now, skipping ahead to the next question, what I would like for you to do is list all of the major mechanisms designed to provide catalytic experience that do not include interaction with other self. That is the first part. I am Ra. We grasp this question that you realize, from this question, that you realize that the primary mechanism for catalytic experience in third density is other self. The list of other catalytic influences, firstly, the creator's universe, secondly, the self. Can you list any subheadings under self or ways the self is acted upon catalytically which would produce experience? I am Ra. Firstly, the self unmanifested. Secondly, the self in relation to the societal self created by self and other self. Thirdly, the interaction between self and the gadgets, toys, and amusements of the self. Other self-invention. Fourthly, the self-relationship with those attributes which you may call war and rumors of war. I was thinking possibly of the catalyst of physical pain. Does this go under this heading? I am raw. This is correct. It going under the heading of the unmanifested self. That is, the self which does not need other self in order to manifest or act. And the second part of the question is to list all major mechanisms designed to provide the catalyst that include action with other self. I am raw. We could speak infinitely, or we could simply state that any interaction betwixt self and other self has whatever potential for catalyst that there exists in the potential difference between self and other self. This moderated and ungirdled by the constant fact of the creator as self and as other self. You may ask this question further if you wish specific information. I believe that this is sufficient for the time being. Before we continue on with today's episode, for those of you interested in getting more fantastic fungi in your life, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about a friend of mine's brand new company, The Great Mother. Recently, I have been drinking The Great Mother's superfood mushroom coffee alternative called Ritual, as well as regularly taking their awesome ally microdoses, and I am truly loving both. As you probably know, these days, many of the world's highest achievers and performers swear by microdosing. The problem is it can still be difficult to get a hold of magic mushrooms. That's why when my friend reached out who lives in an area and country where legalization is not a problem like it was in the past and said he'd be willing to offer microdoses to my listeners, I wanted to pass the word along. Ally microdoses are 100% organic. And in addition to a small amount of the magic active ingredient, they also contain functional mushrooms like lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, and other brain boosters like bacopa. Ally is essentially a full spectrum nootropic. And of course, the coffee alternative ritual doesn't contain magic mushrooms, but it has an array of the best organic functional mushrooms in the world. And, you know, With functional mushrooms, it's really important to get them from the highest integrity sources. And whereas some other highly popular mushroom coffee alternatives on the market only contain a few varieties of functional mushrooms in their actual ingredients, Ritual has seven. Not only does it contain more types, it also contains three to four times the amount that the big brands have in each serving. And it tastes amazing. I actually like to have it on its own as well as mixing it into my coffee sometimes as well. However, since this is definitely a unique offering, there are a few steps. First, just reach out and request to follow the private page, the great dot mother on Instagram. Once you've been accepted to follow, just message what you're interested in getting and someone will get back to you.
Now, I'm not sure if that's sufficient for you all, but maybe I can explain it just a little bit more. So what they're really saying there is that any time we have any pain in the body, this is something that we are doing to ourselves. We don't necessarily need someone else to come in and cause us this pain. This is something that we are mentally and emotionally doing to ourselves each and every time. Maybe the original cause had something to do with another self, but the fact that we are continually rolling around this perspective, this story, this emotion is our choice. So we are doing that to ourselves, whether we know it or not. Most of the time, we don't. So this is why it's so helpful to talk about these things because now when we can be aware, oh, I'm doing this to myself. How am I doing this to myself? Let me think about that. Let me become aware of it. Let me understand my thoughts, my feelings, and emotions so I can bring some balance in here because I don't need to suffer. That's, that's no fun. No one likes pain. And the pain is there to get your attention, to show you, hey, something's a little off. We need your attention. So the pain comes in as this beautiful messenger. So we look at that as a gift. Pain can be a gift because it is just a messenger. And it doesn't need to stay because it is instantaneously healable once the message is learned. I think I'll move on to the next question. And this may be our last question. We'll see. We're moving into session 34 here. And this first question is simply, would you define karma? I am Ra. Our understanding of karma is that which may be called inertia. Those actions which are put into motion, which continue using the ways of balancing until such time as the controlling or higher principle, which you may liken unto your breaking or stopping, is involved. This stoppage of the inertia of action may be called forgiveness. These two concepts are inseparable. If an entity develops what is called karma in an incarnation, is there then programming that sometimes occurs so he will experience catalysts that will enable him to get to a point of forgiveness, thereby alleviating the karma? I am Ra. This is in general correct. However, both self and any involved other self may at any time through the process of understanding, acceptance, and forgiveness, ameliorate these patterns. It is true at any point in an incarnative pattern. Thus, one who has set in motion an action may forgive itself and never again make that error. It also breaks or stops what you call karma. Again, I'm going to say this because it just makes me think about it. This is one of the big reasons why we're doing this workshop, the theme of this workshop, because it is extremely important for us to forgive, to let go. If we're not doing this, we are holding on to baggage, we're holding on to karma, and we're not going to be able to move on to that next place that we came in here just to experience. So we got to let all of this stuff go. All right, next question. Can you give me examples of catalytic action from the last session, beginning with the self-unmanifested producing learning catalyst? I am Ra. We observed your interest in the catalyst of pain. This experience is most common among your entities. The pain may be of the physical complex. More often, it is of the mental and emotional complex. In some few cases, the pain is spiritual in complex nature. This creates a potential for learning. The lessons to be learned vary. Almost always, these lessons include patience, tolerance, and the ability for light touch. Very often, the catalyst for emotional pain, whether it be the death of the physical complex of one other self, which is loved, or other seeming loss, will simply result in the opposite, in a bitterness and impatience, a souring. This is catalyst which has gone awry. In these cases, then there will be additional catalysts provided to offer the unmanifested self further opportunities for discovering the self as all-sufficient creator, containing all that there is and full of joy. Now, this is such an important one that I think we all need to consider all of these catalysts, all of these things that occur in our lives, they are happening for us. And this is what Ra is explaining here. These are all happening for us, for our learning experience. And some of these catalysts, they can go awry because we take them off in a perspective that we didn't originally intend to. From spirit side, we say, oh yeah, cool, I'll have that catalyst. And that's going to teach me this because, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll see that. But then you come into the physical and it's not so easy to see. And so sometimes it goes awry. And that's okay 
because we are always offered another opportunity. And as Ra says here, that opportunity is to discover the self as all-sufficient creator. Your self containing all that there is. And that all is full of joy. It is full of love. That is all that we are. Believe it or not, all of these crazy experiences that we go through are to teach us that. Whether we judge them good, bad, indifferent, they're all here for our learning enjoyment. As part of the play, as part of this magical game that we all get to coexist in. And I personally really, really love existing here. I love this planet. I love this game. And I really, really, really love finding all of this magic, discovering all of the magic around us all of the time, discovering our power, discovering this light within ourselves each and every day, growing stronger and stronger and brighter and brighter, finding this power of love within us all, knowing that we are little fragments of creator. That's all we could ever be. We're here to enjoy and learn from this beautiful game, this beautiful play. And I certainly love being here. I love it so much. The more we understand, the more we can be aware of, the more we can love it. So I hope that that encourages you all to see it maybe in a little bit different way so that you can love it a little bit more too. I love you all so much. I'm going to leave you with this song today by Symbolico called Symbolic Expression. Until next time, I love you all.
Sonic Expression. <laughs> 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 